All right, got a box in the mail. Thanks to PCB Way for supplying boards on our channel. We love them. Um, so let's see what they have in store for us here. Uh, let's get some get some things out of here. I think we got one more. Yeah, we got one more thing in here. All right. So we've got uh, a uh, solder screen. Uh, uh, stencil, solder stencil. So hopefully it's the right side. <laughs> and um, let's see, well, let's hold you in suspense here. Let's look at the solder stencil because uh, I specified the back side and the front side stencil won't do me any good at all. I need the, uh, I need the back side stencil. So let's see how things look here. Wow, I'm having knife problems. <laughs> Not the knife, but me. Yep, it got the right side. All right, so uh, th there's a word of warning. Um, if you're uh, laying out a PC board and you ask for the stencil, um, the default is uh, side one, the, the upper side. And um, you can also choose side two or both sides. Uh, so make sure if you have a funny board, usually, you know, for hobby stuff, it's just the top layer. But if you're doing a uh, two-sided board where you have uh, SMV on the front and the back, you need to have two stencils. So make sure you check the little boxes for either one stencil, two stencils, and either the top or the bottom. But um, I did it right. Yay. <laughs> All right. I almost missed that when I ordered it. I almost missed it. Uh, okay, let's take a look. Yeah, get this out of the way. Let's take a look at our boards. Let's look at our boards. Jeez. There we go. Oh, oh, they're beauties. Let's zoom down on them. Oh, it looks like an MSI computer. Yeah, very nice. The uh, silk screen turned out really good, nice and crisp. Um, this is a real small font, so I'm a little bit worried about it kind of smudging, but uh, no, that it looks really, really good. And uh, the backside looks very, very nice also. All right, so I'm waiting in the mail. Um, I have the switches but I don't have, uh, I've ordered a bag of LEDs and I wanna wait um, for the LEDs to come so I can choose the correct resistor. I, I would do the surface mount now, but I sort of wanna choose the right resistor. It might be a 10K, it might be a 4.7K, um, I'm not sure. I don't want it overly bright for this project, but I want it bright enough. So I just wanna make sure the, uh, the resistor matches the LEDs I'm going to use. So yeah, we've gotta wait for those. All right, so it took a while to load it all up, but uh, here it is. It came out great. Uh, can I zoom in any farther? No, it doesn't really zoom in any farther. Uh, so yeah, um, we have all of the pins. Make sure you adhere to pin one. All the pin ones are uh, in the down direction when you look at the board here. And uh, these are all HC595s, and then we have the one AT Tiny. 814 and it uh, is programmed with a pin here. Uh, there you go. Now on the other, so uh, with my LEDs, uh, I figured the, the right brightness was 4.7K. So I loaded all the resistors with 4.7K and this is the way it turned out. Oh man, this is one of the nicest things I've ever designed. I really, really enjoy this thing. Um, so yeah, it turned out really, really great. So let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the little switches here. Um, I have a couple varieties of them and I didn't really understand that at first. So, um, I had these, when I designed the board, I was kind of thinking of these and the spacing of these, um, leads on this, on this uh, switch are uh, uh, 0.1 inches, 100 mil in, uh, increments. 
and so that's how I laid out the board. Now, I was going to use a bunch of switches, so I ordered more. And the switches that I got have two, two different um, qualities. One is they have these little tabs that stick down, and you're supposed to have, a, a, I guess, a, a, a mounting hole in the board for uh, mechanical stability. So that's a really, really nice feature. But I don't have that hole in my board, so I had to snip these off. It's real easy metal, so you can just snip those off, and then you end up with the same thing. You have three leads. But these three leads are not 100 mil centers. These are two millimeter centers? What are these? Yeah, these are these are two millimeter centers. The other one is a hundred mil center. So uh, they do fit if you just bend them out a little bit, splay the legs a little bit, and jam them in the hole. That's what I did because I wanted to use these switches because they're nicer. If you take a look at the little switch part, the little plastic part, this is kind of this is kind of flimsy, and this is a nice big fat one. Uh, so uh, I used these. So I made them work. And uh, they don't quite, I put them on 150 mil centers and they don't quite fit because the, sometimes the metal isn't bent exactly right, but it, it turned out all right, it turned out all right. Um, all right, so let's turn this thing on. I have a program written. All right, um, so I've put on a, um, uh, pin header here. Uh, I just took a, a, a header and bent the lead so I could solder them onto these pads. And that gave me then a way to push on, push on wires onto that connector. And then uh, I can push them onto my UPDI, which is just a TTL uh, RS-232 adapter. Um, and it's just a power ground and the signal. Okay. So let me take this off so you can see it. So it's just, it's just, just a, a regular header, um, 0.1 inch header. So there you go. Um, and that's how, that's how to program it. Here's five volts. And we'll put on, uh, put on the switch, put all the switches in the, in the down direction. So we'll turn that on, uh, ground here and five volts on that pin there. And then it should be ready to go. All right. So um, the power switch is an actual power switch. When you, so when you turn the power on, uh, you get LEDs. All right. And then if you want to run the program, you would go from stop to run. So I'm flipping the, flipping the run button. <laughs> so it does something. Now, this is just random, random flashiness, but isn't that a joy? <laughs> I really like this thing. It is super, super fun. Looks much better than on camera, I think. Um, so you can halt the program. You can run the program with that. Uh, and then uh, the uh, microprocessor can read these three switches. So this is the 000 program. Here's the 001 program, which is just a, a shift. All right, so we have uh, just a shift of things. Here's the, here's the two, the number two program. The number two program is actually a binary count. So if you watch these things, each, each place is doing an actual binary count. Um, all right, so that's two, this is three. Three is all light. Um, okay, let's do four. Four is five, five in hex. And um, that's four. This is program five. Five is AA in hex. Five, five, AA. All right, that is five. Uh, six is, I don't have anything in six. So six is a no op. And then seven is, um, seven is a program that I wrote that will identify the numerical order of shifting. So this is one big shift register, this one giant shift register. And I needed to know what path it took. I don't, I, I laid it out the way I laid it out, but this is the path it takes. So this is, this is the one register, the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six register. So the bits come into here first and then they, uh, 
go into here, then they go into here, they go into here, then they go into here, and then they go into here. And I think the way that it works is uh, when you start shifting out the data, you actually shift it in this way. So the first byte you shift in comes in here, and then it drops to here, 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 then it drops to here. So the first byte you write in will end up here. The second byte you write in will end up here, then here, then here, and then here, and then here. So um, the microprocessor is kind of like right here underneath. So it, it, it shifts the data in again through this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one well, makes kind of a test. Anyway, so I wrote this program to figure out which, which ones was, was going on. And if we go back to zero, that's the, that's the best one. It's just random, random data. So there you go. That's, this has been a really super fun project. Uh, let me back up a bit. The camera's not picking up the colors correctly. It's, it's red LED, so I'm not sure why exactly it's doing a weird color balance thing. Yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's any better. These camera these these cameras it's hard to get to the right with the white balance uh, correct to get these are these are real ruby red LEDs. So uh, there you go. So that was a great project. Uh, board's going to be available on the share site if you want to put one of these together. And uh, we'll take up uh, take a couple close up pictures here. So I tried to adhere very, very accurately to the front panel of, uh, of an MSI computer, and uh, I got it, I got it uh, pretty accurate, pretty accurate. So there you go.